G'day, I'm Kim Elman and I'm an F1 photographer and this year I'll be heading away for some 24 races and four days of testing. That's 100 days on track for about 12 hours a day. At the end of the year, I will have shot probably around 500,000 images. But what equipment do I use? Well, you're about to find out in this video. So where do we start? Well, let's start with the camera bodies. Canon R3. I take two of these, sensational camera, beautiful autofocus. What I love is that you can actually lock the focus on someone's eye and then reframe the shot and it stays in focus on that person's eye. This shoots up to 30 frames per second, which is pretty handy when it comes to motorsport. This is far lighter than the old 1DX Mark III. It has an articulated screen. That's invaluable when it comes to shooting from low angles. It takes two different memory cards, a CF Express, one of these, and an SD card, one of these. Now, I'll typically shoot JPEGs of this card over the whole four days. Won't ever touch it. On the other card, I'll shoot RAWs and I edit the raw. So at the end of the race, I'm left with every single picture I've taken on this card, which I download and store, just in case somebody comes back in five years and says, oh, I want a frame before the one I saw on your website, which means I can go back and actually find that, albeit it will be a JPEG file. And the third camera I take is the one that I'm shooting this video on. It's a Canon R5. I don't use that much on track. It puts out a much larger file, which is great if I'm going to do something that needs really high resolution but it's certainly not anything like the Canon R3, which is more designed for motorsport. Let's talk lenses, and I'll start with this 600. I don't take it to all races, but to certainly when my son joins me at a number of races this year, he will bring this lens. This is a fixed 600 mil, shoots at f4. Image quality is astounding. Next up, a 100 to 500 millimeter lens, which is very good for bright light, although not so good at night because at 500 millimeters, it's f7.1, but it's so much lighter than carrying a six or a 500. Next up, my favorite lens at the moment, this is Canon's 100 to 300, and I only shoot Canon. Well, when I say only, I've got one lens, which I'll get to in a minute, which is not a Canon lens. This is fantastic at f2.8 for the whole 100 to 300 range. It's a little bit heavier than I would like. This is the 70 to 200 mil, a lot smaller, still f2.8, but obviously it doesn't go to 300. And I think for motorsport photography, the 100 to 300 is a better option for me out on track. Now, almost always I'll have a 70 to 200 or a 100 to 300 on one of my cameras. On the other camera, it could be a 135 mil because this is F2. This allows me to shoot very soft backgrounds and I like to use this on the grid on a Sunday. I'll often use this 50 mil lens too on the Sunday out on the grid because at F1.2, it throws the background completely out of focus. But this lens is quite remarkable. This is a Japanese lens that somebody gave me last year. It's probably worth around about a thousand Aussie dollars, but this is an F1 lens. I mean, not Formula One, I mean F slash one. Its aperture is that low. Have a look at what it does to the backgrounds. But I need an ND filter to shoot in bright light if I want to shoot at those low F stops. So there are the seven lenses I take to almost all races. Sometimes I might swap one out and might put instead a 45 mil tilt shift or a 24 mil fixed or even a 14 mil fixed. Oh, and there's one other lens and it's on this camera right now. It is the 15 to 35 millimeter lens. Next up, let's talk about battery chargers. Here are the three that I take. The one on the left for the Canon R5, the middle one for the R3s, and the right-hand one is for my Pro Photo Flash. Let's talk about that now. It's a great flash unit, very expensive, and I think probably Canon's caught up with Pro Photo now, but I'm stuck with it and uh, I quite like it. And there are a couple of light shaping tools that attach to the front magnetically. Batteries, I take two Pro Photo, I take four for my cameras, two in the cameras at all time and two charging, and two for the R5, one in the camera and one always on charge. And where do I charge them? In the media center. We get a desk, a chair, internet at every single race in a dedicated media center, and I will set up all of my kit there and pretty much leave it at the desk, well certainly batteries charging, on the desk. Some races you have to be a little bit more careful and you might lock stuff up, but in general, most of them are pretty good. And I've thankfully, touch wood, never had anything go missing or stolen. I lost stuff. To use one of these lenses on my new R3s, you need an adapter ring. So I have two of those. 
and a two times converter. So a 600 mil lens becomes a 1200 mil lens and the one to 300 becomes a 200 to 600. Let's talk about other stuff. For instance, these black rapid straps, I love them. I've always used them. I don't know anyone can have a camera just slung over their shoulders. It just doesn't seem very safe. And the beauty of this is when I've got a camera on here, I can quickly bring it up and shoot, bring up this one and shoot, and the other one just hangs. And coming up shortly, you'll have a chance to win one of these fantastic black rapid straps, along with about another $1,200 worth of merchandise. Details coming up shortly. This year, I'm taking one of these with me, a UU. It's uh, essentially water that you freeze inside this thing. You stick it around your neck. You might have seen some of the F1 drivers walking around on hot days. And I think if I'd had one encounter last year, I might have been in a lot better condition. And like the black rapid straps, this will be one of the items in that giveaway pack coming up shortly. Now this year, I've got a couple of extra cameras. One of them being this little Go 3. What I love about it is it becomes very small. You might have seen my recent video where I used a clamp and had it on my hat and walked around with it. That is the camera and I can record and then play it back through this. Looking forward to some great results out of that. Also, I've got one of these Insta 360s, which you can do stuff like sticking that in your mouth and get some amazing shots, wear it on your head. That'll be great for some of my videos and you'll see and notice those shots without a doubt coming up. This is a pretty important piece of equipment. It allows me to suction onto say a window or a smooth surface put a camera, whether it be my phone, the InstaGo or the 360 and enables me to get some very interesting angles. And if there's no way to suction it, I can always clamp it using this small rig attachment. And if I need to mount my phone anywhere, I can use one of these. Because I'm ramping up my video content this year, I need radio microphones. So typically I'll use these Rode mics with a little microphone in white and black. When I'm out shooting on track, I will normally take two cameras with lenses around my neck and then often in this think tank bag, I'll place another couple of lenses and a whole host of other tricks that I may or may not need. And that bag has lasted me seven years now and has not missed a beat. It gets wet, it gets thrown around, it's tough, it's made of, I guess, canvas, but yeah, I love the thing. For those of you wondering if this and my camera is heavy, yes, you certainly would not want to be holding it to shoot. So I need a monopod and I've got a Gitzo monopod, which is lightweight, has a rubber foot on the end, but that is the weak link because often I lose those rubber footers. And once you get a new one and replace it on that metal spike, it never stays on as good as the first time. Next up, I want to talk about this, a stream deck. It is one of the most important pieces of equipment that I have. Now, for many years, I struggled with putting in keywords because what happens is when I'm shooting at a track, let's say I shoot for an hour and a half and I get a thousand photos, I'll come in, I'll bring them all in, I'll quickly pick out the 120 that I want, bring them in, edit them, and then I have to keyword them. So I have to write Max Verstappen, Red Bull Racing, number three. Now, of course, you'd never want to do that manually because it's going to take too long. And with 120 photos to keyword and probably only got a few minutes, this is where this comes into its own. I've programmed it such that I look at a picture of Max and I press the top left button. I look at a picture of Oscar Piastri and I press the top right hand button. And automatically from that one touch, that information is inputted into my keyword section on my laptop. Then I can output that to my ProStarPix.com website and you, when you search, can put in Verstappen, Norris, whatever, and you'll get all of the images I've shot with that driver's name in it. It's also vital for my video editor that he be able to find pictures. This also does so much more than keywording. I can set up macros to output pictures to certain websites, to different clients, send emails to people. Pretty much anything that takes multiple repeated keywords can be done on a Stream Deck. Laptop wise, I've got the latest MacBook. It's a what, 15 inch screen and is particularly hardy. And on my Mac, I will have things like all the races up the top here, all of the driver's names, and down here, all of the team names. That has to be replaced because I've still got Alpha Tauri and um, Alpha Romeo in there, which of course are now, yeah, well, you know what they are. Other stuff, um, gaffer tape, a two terabyte hard drive, card readers, I take two, Hollywood fashion tape, what's that about? Occasionally I need to mount a microphone underneath the shirt, so I use double-sided tape, and that stuff 
is the very best. Earplugs, particularly when I'm working in pit lane where it's very loud, it's vital to have good earplugs and these were made specifically for my ears, cost me about 170 US dollars, but they're immaculate and I keep them in a little pouch around my neck so that I've got them all the time no matter where I am. Another weakness on the Canon R3s are these little duvers that sit here and cushion your eye from your camera. They fall off and they fall off very easily and I was going through probably one every race meeting for um, a good seven or eight months and then somebody gave me these rubber bands. I don't know whether you can see that but this is a rubber band that simply tightens the seal. Not lost one since but I always take spares. On the subject of power I always take one of these multi converters and I also take multiple Apple figure eight plugs for all the countries. Some of you ask whether I shoot with polarizers and I do on sunny days. What does a polarizer do? Well, it's quite remarkable. It, uh, well, th this is a shot without a polarizer and this is one with. The colors tend to pop a bit more. The sky is always a darker blue if it's used in sunshine. And if you've got a situation where there's a window, changing the polarizer, which can be done on the circular turning ring on the outside, changes the look from being able to see through the window to seeing just reflection. And what is this contraption in the middle? Well, that is a graduated filter. And typically when we're shooting at night, when you've got quite bright lights in the bottom half of your shot, because that's the track, and then you've got not much light at the top, I will turn that upside down and darken the bottom half of the photo. Oh, and finally on filters, I do take star filters to night races so that all of the lights that illuminate the track turn into these stars. And you can get four point stars, six and eight point. Now I carry a small light for doing my videos and I used to use this one from LumCube, but do not buy it because this one had a problem. It was still within its warranty and these people refused to talk to me. I'll take my iPhone 15 with a quad lock cover because I love it. And on the back of this cover, it's got this little magnetic thing and I can do stuff like this put on the wallet. I use that all the time, but there's a whole host of extras for the quad lock. But certainly I've never ever had any incident because this is tough as nails. Uh, yeah, so I've got two iPhones, one's a backup. Then I take a Samsung because this is how I transmit my photos from the camera to my websites or my clients. And I'll give you a quick rundown. I've done a separate video on this before, but essentially when I take a photo, I go into the back and I look at the picture. And if that's the one I want to send, I hit the set button, bang automatically that photo is transmitted via this to my Dropbox. That means that I can get my normal phone or this one if I want because they both have Instagram open. I can bring up the picture. I can edit it in Lightroom on my phone. I can then post it while I'm still in the paddock to Instagram and look if the internet's good I can have a picture up within Oh, realistically four minutes, three minutes if I don't need to do much of a caption. And I voice to text my captions and if you've read them sometimes you'll realize that there are mistakes and I'll tell you what happens in most of those cases is I'll be madly typing or voicing to text something and then something else will be coming over here I go right, oh bugger it, I'll just hit that and I'll hit send so then it posts and I take these photos here and then I go oh better check that post and I'll come back and I did one once where I said Antonio G of an artsy da 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 and I came back three minutes later and it said Antonio the Nazi. So people are going, what do you mean? What do you mean? Well, that's just my inattention to detail. And because I'm doing most things myself, I sometimes let things go through unchecked, but I correct them quickly. Other things in this picture, an Australian power board, rather than me having to get power adapters for four different things, I just use this, I plug the power board in, and I can use all of the plugs from Australia without having to change them over. You should do that too if you travel a lot. I take two pairs of glasses because inevitably I'll lose one or break one at some point on a trip. I also take sunglasses which have uh, prescription lenses in them. I take a leather man and this is absolutely invaluable when I'm traveling because oftentimes I'll have to repair stuff on camera kit. I'll need knives, I'll need pliers, file, scissors, knives, saws, and screwdrivers, but get this. It comes with all of these other screwdrivers, and it'll be hard for you to see. But there are eight extras in here with a different head on each end. And changing from a Phillips head to, say, an Allen key is as simple as that. And of course, it doesn't go in my hand luggage, that goes in my suitcase. Why all of the marker pens? Well, I do numerous signed photo collaborations with drivers, and it's important to have a number of different pens because sometimes we're signing 
white on black and sometimes black on yellow. So I've got to have a variety available. And what is the Glow Call Me? Well, that's another device for sending pictures from my camera direct to my websites. I used to use that exclusively, but now I find I get much better, what's the word, flexibility by using this Samsung phone. And thank you to Michael Anthony, who does my IT in the company. He has uh, introduced so many ways to save time because when I'm at the track, I need to do the maximum possible. So being able to save a second here and a few seconds there is vital. But often it's internet that slows us down and while in the media center we do use the Wi-Fi, sometimes it's better to use this cable here and connect direct. And when we're lucky, we can get upload speeds of some 600 megabits per second. And a couple of final things in this picture, those green items there with the white heads, uh, camera sensor cleaners. Luckily, for most races, we have Canon and Nikon in the media center there to service our cameras, lend us gear, and to fix any hiccups we may have, but not all races. So on the odd occasion when my sensors are dirty and I have to take to them myself, I find those are the best option. And memory cards, the ones on the right, the CF Express cards, are worth for a 500 gig about 500 US dollars. The ones on the left, the SD cards, yeah, a fraction of that, maybe I'm thinking probably 20 US dollars. But those big cards, 500 gig for CF Express, allows me to shoot a lot of photos in very quick succession and the camera stores them all. And these images are sized about 23 megabits. What software do I use for my workflow? I use two. Photo Mechanic and Lightroom. Photo Mechanic is a very quick way for me to go through a thousand photos and just pick the ones I want to import into Lightroom. Once I get them into Lightroom, then I would spend probably no more than about five seconds per image editing, unless it's something important and I might take a couple of minutes there. Or after the, the day's events, I could take 15 minutes. But most of the time, my workflow pretty much dictates that I work quickly and hence I only spend a few seconds per picture. I'll bring every photo in and I'll use one of my presets which is Turbo and that typically gives my photos just a nice little edge. It's not hugely different but straight away the image looks better because if you're a photographer you'll know that when you shoot raw they come out of the camera looking pretty flat and you can get my preset packages by heading to kimilman.com, going to the shop and purchasing them. When I'm in the paddock and I don't have my good video camera that I'm shooting this video on now, I'll always have my phone with me and I take out one of these Rode microphones, put a windsock on it because that's vital in just about any sort of wind condition. And that sits at the bottom of my phone and gives me sensational audio. A reminder too that you can get your hands on my 2023 best of photo book and this 2024 calendar at my shop at kimelman.com where you can also buy a photo book on every single race for the last, I think it's two and a half years, and on every single driver. They'll be sent to most countries around the world. Oh, and here's a whole lot of stuff that you want to have a look at. Thanks for watching and stay passionate. No, I can't sneeze. Bugger, bugger, bugger.